So you found the perfect pair of frames for your sport and now you're looking at lenses. Should you get polarized? Should you not? Stick around, I wanna talk about it. Hello and welcome on my glass, Tyler. I wanna to talk to you about polarized lenses and their place in sport use. I will talk specifically about a little overview about what polarized lenses actually do. And then I'm gonna talk about where polarized is a yes, a maybe, and where it's a no. The goal of this video is just to give you a little better insight as to the functionality of polarized and how they can benefit you or not benefit you, maybe even be detrimental to your sport use. If by the end of this video, you are ready to order, don't forget about SporterX and also definitely do not forget about our See Better Guarantee because with that, you're never stuck with something that you don't like or doesn't work for you. You have as long as 45 days with them, even in prescription to figure that out. You just reach out to us, we take care of you no matter what that means on our end. And also, we have opticians, very friendly, very knowledgeable, who'd love to help you get it right the first time. So definitely use this as a resource to make sure that you are confident in what you're ordering and reach out to us. Let's talk about polarized in sports. Okay, let's start with a brief overview of what polarized lenses even do or what they are. I am only gonna go briefly into this because I've done many videos, some specifically tackling this question alone. And so if you are interested in getting more information, check that video out. An overview, it's a filter in the lenses that blocks glare bouncing off of other objects. So the asphalt, vehicles, windshields, water, snow. So really good in highly reflective environments or just casual wear, of course. You can get them in prescription. Don't forget about that. We're Sporter X, I always have to bring that up. It can affect your depth perception. So there's a big indicator as to whether or not it might be right for your sport. Keep that in mind. Uh, that is a can it's not always going to affect everyone's depth perception but the way that it works is it's cutting light on a single plane and so it can make certain things look a little flatter i mean that kind of makes sense right it's cutting glare bouncing off of other objects less shiny means more matte more flat so a little bit of a hit potentially in that depth perception also it can interfere with digital displays so think about your cycling computer think about computers in your vehicle or digital displays. It's not always an issue here. Uh, when talking about cars, I used to say, now that we've gotten to the place that we've gotten to with technology in our displays, it's less of an issue, but now we've gotten even beyond that. And we've kind of maybe in some, especially in uh, more luxury cars with these head up displays, it might be an issue again. So be aware of what you have. I would say that with most bike computers, like a lot of Garmin's, they're all pretty good with polarized, but it's still, we'll talk a little bit more about it, but stick around because I'm gonna talk about some specific sports. So let's start with the yeses. Let's start with the sports where polarized lenses are from either good to recommended, maybe even a downright necessity. And that first one, top of the head is going to be fishing. Fishing makes the most sense. You're out in the water. The water is crazy reflective, especially if you're competitive and you're wanting to see into the water. It makes a big difference in your ability to really perform in the sport and especially with different types of fishing. And that's a whole other topic. We've definitely done videos on what lens colors and what lens options we recommend for different types of fishing. So check that out if you're interested in it. Uh, but then right next to fishing, boating, sailing, of course, you're still on that water. It is very reflective and it's going to help remove that distraction so you can focus on the boat. Running is one where I usually recommend it. I think it's a good idea because generally speaking, there isn't going to be much of a detriment, much of a downside while you're running to have that polarized, but it's definitely going to help with vehicles or any other reflective surface that you might be running around. Also driving, like I mentioned, like everyday use. I think driving is kind of in the same vein as like an, a good everyday pair because most people drive. Uh, the polarized lenses are definitely a good idea because it's going to help cut glare off of the surface of the road as well as other vehicles and windshields and get rid of that distraction so you can focus on driving. Really any activities where you are near the road, near vehicles, near reflective surfaces, especially water, where there is lots of glare, there are any sports that I missed that do fit that category, then that's what I would recommend it for. So how about those maybes? What about the maybes? Well, my first maybe, and this is kind of on the, 
uh, maybe too good end of the spectrum would be cycling. I, I do usually just give the caveat of the potential downsides, things that can be an issue with cycling, but I think for the most part, cycling is uh, a little more potentially an issue than running, but still in that same vein. With cycling, you do have the cycling computers. I mentioned in the beginning, the Garmin's tend to be better with the polarizing filter and the display with not having any issues there, but definitely be aware of what your cycling computer is or any other gear you have on your handlebars uh, that might conflict with the functionality of a polarized lens. Another one is skiing or snowboarding. This is actually kind of more at the bottom end of the maybe. I usually try to avoid it just because it makes it more difficult to discern ice from snow. There are some lenses out there, if we're talking snow goggles in particular, uh, that have a degree of polarization, not maybe 100% polarized, that they do skirt that fence and they, they give you still the benefits of cutting glare off of the snow, which is nice, but not so much so that you can't tell when you're about to go over some ice. So keep that in mind if you're considering it for skiing or snowboarding. Some people love them. They just wear them as sunglasses, but to each his own, just know what to expect. Safety work is another one that's uh, kind of in line with everyday use. I think safety work can put you in a lot of different environments. And so that is one of those maybes. It just depends on where you're working, what you're working on. Another one is mountaineering. Again, this is kind of in that same vein of snow. It's really going to be good because you're usually in pretty harsh light conditions when you're mountaineering. And if you are in snowy conditions, that's kind of the caveat. That's the thing to be concerned with is that you can't discern things like ice from snow. But overall, I think mountaineering is a pretty good one for polarized. But again, that's one of those to each his own. There are some mountaineering, hardcore mountaineers who love to get a good polarized lens and others who don't. Uh, check out Julbo. That's a really good brand for getting an idea of what lenses are ideal for this sport. When it comes to golf, there is, this is again, usually on the lower end of the maybe toward not recommended. For golf, generally speaking, there isn't much of a benefit to it. Yeah, the only thing I can think of is water traps. But outside of that, you're not getting a lot of glare off of the grass or off of sand or dirt or rocks uh, or the, the green. So it doesn't really help you much while you're playing and that depth perception can be an issue. And so keep that in mind. The caveat here, I would say, is Maui Jim. Maui Jim is a brand that I've seen a lot, especially the Hoa Kipa. Oh, this guy right here. I see a lot on golfers out on the course, and I have heard almost across the board positive experiences about. And they have some amazing lenses, especially that HT lens at high transmission. Really nice on the golf course. It is fully polarized, but something to be aware of. Check it out. Uh, again, there's a matter of preference here and just understanding what to expect, I think, is what's going to give you the, the starting point on whether or not you should get it, especially in this maybe category. All right, let's talk about the nose. When do I discourage or say I really do not think that you should get polarized lenses? Ball sports. I think ball sports is a really big one because depth perception cues, even though it isn't a guaranteed issue, there usually isn't much a benefit in that. Just like I was talking about with golf, there isn't much of a benefit because you're not in an environment with lots of reflective surfaces, a lot of glare. And if it does affect your depth perception, then that's detrimental because you're trying to track a ball. It's it, it's a fast moving, not very large ball. Uh, so I do discourage it. So baseball, tennis, basketball, of course, usually that's indoors anyway. So you're probably not looking at a dark sunglass lens, but Keep that in mind. I do discourage for just about every ball sport across the board. Avoid polarized. Mountain biking is another one. Again, there's another element to polarized is that it is meant really for sunglass lenses. There are not a lot of high light transmission polarized lenses. There are a few out there, but with mountain biking, they tend to prefer more light rather than less and maybe even variable light. And so there are a lot of issues, but again, not a lot of reflective surfaces in that sport. That environment is usually under tree cover or in, especially here in San Diego, a little more dry, arid, but ultimately at the end of all of this, of course, it is still your choice. I've said it probably four times. 
that it just knowing what to expect is really going to be your biggest tool here. If the sport that you're looking at doesn't have that much glare, you don't see much uh, of a benefit to it, then you can do without it. Otherwise, it is a really nice feature to have as an everyday all around pair. Do also keep in mind, there are other lens features to consider. This is just one lens feature. We have done so many videos on so many different options that are out there. Check those out. One that comes to mind is a mirror coating that can help a lot with if you do have more sensitive eyes and you need something that's maybe a little more or less light transmission or that's a good feature to throw on if you want to reflect more light back. It also helps with something that I call ambient glare, which is like coming in at harsh angles. There are a lot of things to break down and get into with that. I don't need to get into here. We're talking polarized lenses, but check out the different lens features that can get you to that much closer to the perfect pair, if not the absolute perfect pair. And again, another good resource is us optician. So reach out to us. So that wraps it up for Tyler's top tips on polarized lenses for sport use. I hope that you got something out of this. I hope that I covered what you were hoping to cover your sport, or you got a little more insight as to what to expect with a polarized lens in a specific sport application. I know I didn't get too into the weeds. These are more broad strokes, but I hope that it was informative and that you got something out of it. Do not forget if you are ready to order about our See Better Guarantee. I really think that it is a huge peace of mind, especially when you're ordering online, like with us and just knowing that we're gonna take care of you. Our goal is making sure you get something that you like and that you want to wear and works for you. And so we are dedicated to making sure that that happens. Again, our opticians are a great resource, so check us out. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this was interesting or valuable information. If so, throw us a like because that helps us out. You can find relevant videos over here and also we have great content on our social media outlets. I think you should check us out there too because I think you'll like it. And you can find us at SportRx.